Today, on Commitment to Truth. Do not bypass the cross. It'll get you through your most darkest times, your most frustrating times, your most dip- disappointing times. It will get you through your pain because your pain would never be as great as the pain of Jesus. Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we continue a series titled, In Awe, Because our lives can be very hectic, we often forget to spend time thinking about how awesome the God we worship really is. Spending time thinking about and just being in awe of our God can help to revitalize our relationship with Him. This week, Pastor Cedric Brown will teach us how we can be in awe of our salvation through Jesus Christ. We will learn how we should live with gratitude, and by doing so, we can live lives that are open to God's leading and fellowship. Finally, we will learn how we need to trust only in those things that are unshakable and eternal, and not to trust those things that are shakable and will never last. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. So let's today, let's say today, today's your first day at church, and you're like, I'm trying to come to church because I, I want to kind of find God. <laughs> you know what would have happened? You would have walked through the door and you would have died if it wasn't for the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because of Christ, it is easy to find God. Because of Christ, it is so simple to get closer to God. Because of Christ, you and I can have an intimate relationship with the God of all creation because of the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But this is how it is now, again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 22, it says this. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil. Hear the word veil again? But here's the veil, that is his flesh. When Jesus Christ died, his flesh was also ripped so we can enter in. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with sincere hearts in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from any evil conscience. This word sprinkled clean means to be purged, purified, washed from anything that is evil in your conscience. That's what Jesus did. I don't know about you, I have back. I have bad memories and bad conscience over some stupid stuff I did before Christ. Growing up in Compton, California, last of eight kids, doing some stupid stuff. Trust me, you don't think my conscience is, is, is guilty sometimes, but you know what I do? I look to the cross. I look to the resurrection. And it keeps me grateful. You don't think I failed in my marriage? Absolutely. Failed as a parent? Failed as a pastor? Absolutely. But you know what keeps me going? Keep my eyes on the cross. My eyes on the resurrection. Keeps me grateful. And that's why if you look at this, it says having our hearts sprinkled clean. It says and our bodies washed and made pure. Listen, you know what gratefulness does for you and I? It never, ever, it's never, ever, ever as bad as it could be. It's never bad as it could be. Because you know why? When I fail, guess what if I, I, don't, I would never have to do? Be nailed to the cross. You see, doubly so, this is why it's important. Because Jesus was forsaken, 
you and I will never be forsaken. Because Jesus says, you know, my God, my God, you know, don't, don't forsake me. Don't turn your back on me. Don't cast all the sins of the world, past, present, and future on me. Don't do that. Because he did it still, I will never be rejected. Do not bypass the cross. It'll get you through your most darkest times, your most frustrating times, your most dip disappointing times. It will get you through your pain because your pain will never be as great as the pain of Jesus. How do we live in all of the finished work of Christ? First, live with gratitude. And living with gratitude leads to our second point. Hebrews chapter 12 again, verses 22 through 25. It says this. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to myriads of angels, to the general assembly and, uh, and church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of a new co covenant, and to the sprinkled blood which speaks better than the blood of Abel. Verse 25. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. See to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. I will say that to you today. See to you, see to it that you do not refuse him who is speaking. You see, and that's always the challenge. God will use people, God will use circumstances to speak to us. What do we do? Refuse. See to it that you do not refuse him with speaking. You see, gratitude leads to our second point, which is this. Live open to him. Stop refusing him. He doesn't deserve to be refused. His record shows on the cross and his resurrection proves to you he can be trusted. You follow me? You see, he's not like your father who disappointed you, mother that disappointed you, previous boyfriend, girlfriend. He's not your previous pastor. He's not a previous spiritual leader. He's not a previous person or created thing that disappointed you. So he says, don't refuse my voice. The proof is on the cross. The proof is, on, is through the resurrection don't refuse my voice. When one is grateful, their hearts are always open. Can I use marriage as an example again? You know the times that I, I close up to my wife, Lisa, is when I become ungrateful. You know when a young person closes up to their parents? It's when they become ungrateful. You know when a parent begins to clam up with their child? Because they begin to be ungrateful. They think they own the child. Like, you don't understand what I've done for you. <laughs> well, you really didn't do anything. God did it. You follow me? So it, it, it's like this as well. Let's say you've been praying and asking God for that job. You get her in that job, then you become ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know what happens is, well, I can't believe it. This job is not meeting my needs. I, you know, I want, a, I want a new job because, you know, they're, they're not giving me what I deserve, right? Right? It's because you become ungrateful. And then it hinders the relationships that are on the job. Listen, it wasn't that the people around you changed. The heart changed. And then one becomes ungrateful, and then there begins to be this hardness of heart. 
and then now I'm not open to anything that people say around me. Same thing happens with God. We lose sight of the cross. We become unfaithful, unfaithful, yeah, ungrateful people who become unfaithful sometimes. Ungrateful that ultimately leads to, God, I know you're speaking, but I'm not going to respond to you. I know you're telling me what to do. I know you're trying to correct me. I know you're trying to redirect me, but I'm not going to listen to you. Let me say this to you in two ways. All of us reaches that point, or we, all of us was at that point even before we really surrendered to Christ. We refused him. I can look back on my life before I really committed to Christ to follow him, that I refused him, I refused him, I refused him, pushed him away. He was sent a friend. He was sent to this other person. He was sent a stranger. Refuse him, refuse him. You ever been there? It's like, it's like why are you telling me about Jesus? I, I don't even know you. And, and, and you refuse him, refuse him, right? I would like to say to that group of people, Somebody's praying for you. And if you know someone in your life that you know that maybe they're not where they should be, start praying for them. That their hearts will be open to him. Right? Because I know someone was praying for me. Thank you for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We'll continue with the second part of the message right after this. Influencing your world. Have you ever wondered why you were born where you were born? Why this family? Why this particular community? Why this part of the world? Why do I have these friends? Why this school at this time? Why this church? It's simple. God, through his sovereign wisdom, he knows precisely what you need to fulfill his purposes in you for his glory. You can purchase this book and others by Cedric Brown at cedricbrown.com. Thank you again for joining us for today's message from Commitment to Truth. We now return for the second half of our message. And this is what Paul said at, uh, in Ephesians chapter 1 to the church at Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18 and 19, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. In other words, to make, to understand. God, I pray that my son, my daughter, my wife, my husband, my kids, my boss, my enemy, that God, that you will enlighten them, that you will make them understand. Help them to open up to you. Help them to see the fear of the cross. Help them see the wonder of the resurrection. Paul goes on to say this, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe. God, can you move in their hearts so they can see and experience what I now see and experience because of the cross and because of your resurrection. So today, if you're here for the first time or you're watching for the first time, it, here's the wonder of the cross is that you're here because someone prayed for you. You're seeking because someone prayed for you that you'll be open to him. But here's the challenge. Once you become open to them, like some of us or maybe most of us are today, we lose sight of what he did. We lose gratitude. We're not as open to him anymore. But let me speak to you who are followers of Jesus Christ, but yet for whatever reason, you've lost your gratitude. For whatever reason, you're refusing his voice. Here's our challenge. Our challenge is this. Through his death, through his burial, through his resurrection, he purchased you. Your life is no longer your own. 
And if his li your life is no longer your own, that means he has full control of you. If you go to the store and you buy a product, that product no longer belongs to the person who had it on the shelf. The price you've paid for it says it now belongs to you. Because of the fear of the cross, because of the wonder of the resurrection, guess what? If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, he owns you. Now, that's difficult to, to wrap our heads around, right? Because you think about, well, he owns me. What do you mean by that? Because many times we find ourselves in a relationship and people try to place ownership over us and control us. But at the end of the day, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and you're refusing him, you need to understand that no, he paid for full control of every part of your life. Your past pains, your present confusion, and your future promises and your future goals, guess what? He owns the pain between your parents and you and siblings and issues and previous husbands and wives and relationship. He owns that because he died for it. He owns your today. He owns your tomorrow. And that's why he says, acknowledge me in all of your ways and I will do what? Make your pathway straight. Because he's purchased every part of you, good, bad, or indifferent. He has purchased you, bad relationships. He's purchased that, good relationship, new relationship. He has purchased it all, old job, new job, current job. He's purchased everything associated with you. And the dilemma of a follower of Jesus Christ is that tension. No, I'm in control, God. And God says, no, I'm in control. No, this is my money. God says, no, it ain't your money. Well, this is my house. God says, no, it isn't your house. Because that's why that radiator is going to break and you're going to be calling on me because you're going to realize it's not really your house. Right? So he'll, he'll weave his way in there somehow. Well, this is my job, my education. I, I put the hard work in. Well, then things crumble around you. And then, <laughs> right, then we call on the Lord. Then we realize how much his hand is really involved in everything. And that's why this is important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13 and 15, one of my favorite verses of Scripture. <clears throat> very easy, very simple, but, but deep verses, uh, 13 through 15, actually. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. It says, for if we are beside ourselves, that word in the Greek, words in the Greek means this, if I'm out of my mind. In other words, if I'm acting strangely to you, it says it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. In other words, if I'm prim, proper, always in control of everything, I'm really putting on a show for you. Okay? And then it says, for the love of Christ controls me. His love for me should control me. Because of what you did on the cross should cause me to consider every move I make, every thought I think, every word I speak. And then the scripture says this to you and I. We love him because he what? So his love for me controls me. My love for him does what? Control me. Again, relationship one-on-one. -on -one. Because of my love for my wife, my children, my love for you, my love for God, there are certain things I do and certain things I do not do. It controls me. The word control here in the Greek means this. It means it constrains me. In other words, it, it <laughs> keeps me in chains sometimes and tells me, no, you can't. But then it also means that it compels me. It tells me to move. So that's what love does. Love says no, then love says yes. 
Love says stay. Love says go. Love says don't say that. Love says say that. Love says don't go there. Love says go there. It will constrain you and say no, 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 no. And it will, it will compel you to say yes, I have to do this because of his love for me and my love for him. He bought that on the cross. He earned that through his resurrection to have this openness towards him to say, Lord, I've been purchased by you and there is nothing in my life that is off limits to you. My successes, my heartbreaks, you all purchased them. You purchased them all. Why is that important? It's because our heartbreaks, our successes, our failures, and all the above and below makes us all who we are. And he purchased all of you. Three ways to live in all the finished work of Jesus Christ. Living with gratitude causes us to have a very open, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That Jesus, my life is my own. Do whatever you will with it. Leads to our third point. This openness to whatever God wants to do in your life leads to this. <laughs> God, if it must be removed, you have the privilege to remove it. In other words, I now become comfortable with removing those shakable things in my life. What, is, what does the scripture mean? Okay, last few verses. Here it goes. It says, and his voice shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removing, listen to what it says, the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. So you know what the shakable things in our lives? Anything that's created. Creator God, off limits. Anything that's created, he should have the privilege to shake it out of our lives. If it does not help us to be more like Jesus, if it does not help us to be more like whom he's called and created us to be, God, you have the privilege to shake it up. Shake it up. Thank you again for listening to our series, In Awe. From Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Hebrews 12.28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Throughout this series, we hope you are reminded how awesome our God is whom we serve and worship, and that you are encouraged to have a life of worship for our Lord. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.